So we have about five more minutes, so can we, uh, we'll open the floor for questions for the other speakers. And we can uh, put the key questions up as well, please. So I think moving forward, based on the, the uh, speaker's talks, Raj, I think we did a fairly good job at posing the first two questions. Um, well, is vitamin D important for skeletal muscle? And if so, what are the putative mechanisms, both direct and indirect? I think there's still some me mechanistic details to work out there. Again, what are the ACTAR 2A and B ligands that are important for muscle and bone? Are we going to develop two for therapies that can affect both organs uh, simultaneously to minimize frailty, fracture risk, and muscle loss? And then uh, the third um, set of third key research question will have to pose differently, but that will be related to the combinatorial effects of diet and exercise uh, for weight loss in the elderly and if there are beneficial effects of that. So. I had a quick question for Beth Dawson Hughes, um, Kasson from Oxford. Um, you, you made a point that uh, 2,000 units was probably too much, but I think from your paper you showed that 2,000 units reduced readmissions f to hospital. Is that correct? And is that, what's the mechanism for that then? Uh, this, uh, you're referring to a subset analysis in the uh, acute hip fracture patients uh, who were randomized to 800 or 2,000 units. There was no overall, as I mentioned, uh, risk reduction for falls or falling uh, or for uh, any of the performance measures. There were several uh, uh, secondary endpoints that were very interesting. One was fewer hospitalizations for injurious falls. Another was of uh, many uh, fewer infections. Uh, and exactly what the basis for the either of those observations is, we don't know. The study was just too small to have subset analyses really be reliable. But it was, it was interesting, I agree. Yeah. Dennis, do you have any sense of um, changes in habitual physical activity levels in the elderly who are losing weight simply because of diet and how that might compare to physical activity levels in those who are both dieting and receiving the exercise intervention? Well, we did some physical activity questionnaires and, um, and one thing for sure is they didn't participate in a supervised exercise program. So that's all we know with regard to the physical activity relative to the intervention group. And, and that didn't show any uh, increase in their physical activity outside of the intervention. Nicholas, San Francisco, Bess, I have to ask you uh, a question in your own practice. Uh, you know, and I think everybody uh, appreciates the fact that there's a lot of variation in the absorption of vitamin D, uh, and there, we won't go into all the reasons for that. Um, so in your own practice, um, are you measuring the response to your 800 units and appropriately adjusting the vitamin D supplementation to get them to wherever your magic is, whether it be 20 or 30 nanograms per mil? I don't want to go into that debate either. Um, but what are you, um, what is, in my humble opinion, it's the serum level of the 25D, which is the important thing, not how much goes into the tummy. So uh, where are you on this? Oh, the, uh, my practice experience uh, has been in the setting of a metabolic bone disease clinic, uh, not in a general practice setting. In that specialty setting, uh, where most of the referrals are osteoporotic, um, it's routine to do 25-hydroxy-D uh, measurements, and virtually all the time they will be quite low. Um, these patients will need more D than your standard walking well uh, people will need. So my, that sense of 800 uh, has been developed around a healthier set of people. Um, uh, I would, uh, were I in that practice situation, uh, start with a bigger dose of vitamin D, well, larger, much larger than 800. In that clinical setting, I would start with a couple thousand units generally. Um, I think it's important to, uh, 
to recognize that there's a whole lot of measuring of 25D going on in the general practice community that I personally and many others think is inappropriate. Um, I think only those who are at high risk for having a low 25 hydroxy D level should actually be measured. Uh, most others, the others, should just be put on uh, the 800 units of vitamin D. I agree 100%. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's thank our speakers again, please.